Hi there boys and girls, Matthews here and welcome back to the first in the new series on Dyson Sphere program. Let's not mess about, let's jump straight in, let's start ourselves a new game, let's randomize ourselves a map. That one. 64 stars. We're gonna start on Mini Car G type. No, I don't like that name. Zeta. Let's find a new, find a cool name. Hercules, yeah, Hercules G, gangster, Hercules G star type, that's what, oh, G type star is the type, well, we're starting on Hercules, we are going to start on Hercules, let's go, if you guys want to copy the same seed, use the code 84230674, let's roll. This is Icarus, a lightweight industrial mecha with powerful functionality. What is a Dyson Sphere? Well, a Dyson Sphere is a concept by a Mr. Freeman Dyson, hence the name. Dyson Sphere is an imaginary space giant that can surround an entire star and obtain almost all of its energy. So that's what we're doing then. We're, uh, we're trying to harness the power of the sun. Yes, let's, let's do this. Right, first thing we're going to notice is our little starty zone is very barren of materials. We've got lots of iron and a little bit of oil and uh, nothing else. We're going to want to go somewhere else to start. I think this is not a great starting zone. Let's, uh, let's skip forward and I'll find ourselves a good starting spot. Okay then, well... What I've done is I've found us a nice little starting spot. It's not perfect, but it will it will, it will do. Let's now let's talk for a minute or two about why this is a cool little starting spot. For starters, we've got iron. Iron is one of the most crucial items to have at the beginning of the game. We're going to need some coal relatively quickly because we, as a mech, our Icarus dude needs fuel, and coal is the easiest and most abundant resource, or should I say fuel, for Icarus to use at the beginning of the game. We've got ourselves a little bit of copper, because we're going to need this for things like circuits and whatever. Uh, there's also a little oil patch here. Now, before too long, we'll start needing oil. We're, we're, we're still a little way off using it, but it's certainly good to have it relatively close by. The only slight downside to this location is there's not really a great stack of stone. We're going to have to go pretty far north to get ourselves some stone, but we can mine some up and we can bring it down. The crucial thing for me, though, was getting a nice little big old patch of land where we can build ourselves a little starter base. Uh, now, this is going to be a starter base that is going to really function to craft all of the entry-level ent entry items for us. Now, we've got to unlock the technologies and do a few bits and pieces before we get there. But if we just sort of jump to the map ever so quickly, we can see we've got all our resources around here with our stone up the top. we got the, the, the oil in the center here. But this landmass... This landmass here is going to be pretty well suited for us to build a little sort of um, like a bit of a make all, a bit of a starter base. Nothing too fancy, but gives us plenty of room to build in this. So uh, let's get going. Let's uh, firstly take a look at the technology tree. The technology tree is one of the core foundations of the game. We're going to work our way through this tree in in its entirety eventually, uh, but we got to start with the basic stuff. The first thing we're going to have to do is unlock electromagnetism. This basically gives us our power. Uh, early days, we don't have many options for power. We basically have wind turbines to rely on. These things are pretty terrible. They produce virtually no power whatsoever, but they are, well, you got to start somewhere, right? We additionally unlock though the mining machines and this is going to be the start of our automation. So let's get that on the go. To begin with, at the beginning of the game, you can actually research stuff manually. You do it all by hand, most of the stuff you do is by hand. So what we can see here is that we need some magnetic coils. If you press the F button, you open your replicator. It will also open your inventory. If you just want to open your inventory, you've got the E key. But what we need to do is look at the magnetic coils. Now, what do these need? Select the item and it will tell you, you need two, two magnets and one copper ingot. 
conveniently, the game does start you off with just enough materials to get this up and running without actually going out and gathering anything. We need 10 of them to complete the research. Now these come in pieces of two, so we actually only need to produce it five times. One, two, three, four, five. By the time those have produced, our research should be ticking along nicely, and we should be ready and off to the races. Electromagnetism, excellent stuff. Now we can do some power. Now we can do some power. Okay, so with a few little bits of technology taken care of, you're very quickly going to want to start automating some stuff. Now while at least for the first 10 minutes or so of the game, running up and tapping away at a single piece of iron ore is uh, one way of getting the iron, but wouldn't it be much nicer to do this in an automated fashion? Yes, yes it would. So let's go to gathering, let's take our mining machine and let's find a good home for this to go. So you really realistically want these connected to at least six mining nodes at a time. Six is a good number because then that gives you the ability to have two of these and to fully saturate the basic entry level belt. We are going to also need to get some power to this. So we're going to need our wind turbine. Let's just position this over uh, out of the way for the moment so it doesn't get in the way of our other buildings. We're going to want somewhere to put all of the ore that it gathers. Let's put a conveyor belt down. It doesn't need to be too long, just a few pieces of conveyor belt to start with. And let's put somewhere to store this. Let's make ourselves a storage container. Let's put this right next to the belt here. That will do nicely. And the last thing we're going to need to figure out is, well, how do we get this into here? Well, that is done with the logistics and the sorters. Now, there's a little trick with the sorters. There's actually, the sorters can go up to three tiles distance, so you don't necessarily need to put items directly next to the transport belt, but the further they are away from the transport belt, the slower their transfer speed is. So you wanna try and get your buildings as close to the transport belt as possible. This does mean later on we could have maybe even three transport belts in front of a machine, and we could be pulling from all of the belts in one go. Kind of pretty helpful. So let's get that there. What I am also going to do is I'm going to put a second one. I'm going to make it so that the materials go into the into the storage box first and then back out onto the transport belt as and when there's a need for them. Let's finish off the power. Let's get our Tesla power coil. Put that down. That basically acts as a power pole. You have and we're off to the races. Power transmission facility. Tesla Tower. It can carry out short distance wireless power transmission and expand the power supply area of the power grid. Click on it to view the current power grid information. So there's some in an interesting things to see here. Our satisfaction is currently only about 70%. These machines take way more power than these little wind turbines can actually produce. Now it will still operate even if it doesn't have all of the electricity it needs. It's just going to run a little bit slower. Now, obviously, long term, you want to make sure your factory's got as much power as possible. So we're going to build ourselves a little bit of a wind farm before long. But for now, this is kind of acceptable. This is going to fill up. Our storage chest is going to fill up. And then it's going to sort of go down to idle mode. And then we don't have to worry about it so much. Another little tip for you with the storage containers. As you can see, the iron ore is filling up in here. But there are many occasions where we don't want an entire storage chest full of materials. Something that's not very obvious initially is that this is actually a sliding bar. When it's fully, uh, fully extended, it basically opens up the entire storage chest, but you can drag it back and you can sort of uh, quite easily limit the amount of items that are going to go in there. Especially when you get later into building like a, like a mall section or a make-all area. You're not necessarily want to, going to want you're not going to want full storage boxes full of like high end expensive buildings so you can limit it this way that's pretty pretty useful for all though we're going to want at least you know like half a row maybe that should do us nicely but there we go there's our first little bit of automation we've got some iron being put into a storage box so that we can run past and we can pick it up as and when we need it we're going to need to replicate this on the iron the, uh, sorry, on the coal, on the copper, and even on the stone, wherever our stone went. Can't remember where our stone went. We'll find it. But we'll, uh, I'll run off and I'll get these little automations done, and we'll, uh, we'll catch up once we're done. Okay, then. So now we can see we've got our 
coal, uh, sorry, our stone up and running, our iron up and running, our coal in the distance there, and way, way, way over in the distance we've got our copper. So we've got all of the four main materials being tapped now and also going into storage chests. One thing I should probably uh, do at this moment in time, as you can see, our energy bar is now less than half what it probably should be, is to remind you guys about the fuel chamber. Now, the fuel chamber is an area that, well, basically, a mech is a machine. It needs its own little bit of fuel. Now, early game, you're going to want to fuel it with a few different things. The easy to come by things are going to be things like your plant fuel. You're not going to really have any use for this early days, so you might as well throw it in there. Give yourself a nice little buff of energy. Your energy bar does actually naturally go up slowly but surely anyway. But literally the second you start walking, um, you're, you're going to notice it declining much, much faster. Wood is another alternative. But one of the best things I'd recommend is if you've got a little bit of automation set up on your coal at the beginning, is to just keep a couple of stacks of coal. Oh, there we go. There's our first mistake. We didn't limit the coal chest. Look. Keep a couple of stacks of coal available because this is a really good fuel for your mech at the beginning of the game. Now, it's not the best thing to use eventually, but it will get us up and running for now and give us plenty of speed for our little robot. If the energy bar gets all the way down to the bottom, he stops constructing and he goes really slow. So we really don't want that now, do we? Talking about having a slow mech, one of the things you can do at the beginning of the game is uh, jump into the upgrades tab. Now this is, <laughs> weirdly, I, I, I missed this the first time I played this game because when you first open the technology tree, you get presented with this. It's not blindingly apparent that this is even a thing in the first place. But if you click on upgrades, it's like there's a whole new second uh, technology tree technology tree. Instead of um, creating more buildings and resources, this is upgrading your mech directly. Uh, at the beginning of the game is going to be your mechanical frame to give yourself some movement speed, but we are going to need electric motors to do that, so for now at least that's going to have to wait. But there are some cool things in here. Uh, a couple of things that I would sort of suggest that you uh, head towards, you may not be able to get them very quickly in the early game, but you've got things like your drone engines, when we start researching some technology, this is really helpful. Giving your actual construction bots a bit more speed is super beneficial at the beginning of the game. And the energy circuit one, this is one you want to get going pretty quickly as well. You can't do it at this point because we are missing the ability to make this energetic graphite, but this will come before too long. Uh, but don't forget about this upgrade tree. It was hidden from me for a long time through my first playthrough, and I kind of felt a bit foolish. But, yeah... So, technology-wise, we're going to jump into, we're going to get some smelting on the go. Now we've got all of the items mined, we're going to need to look at actually turning those raw materials into something more useful. So let's learn smelting and get that researched. Okay then, boys and girls, so there we go. There's our, there's our units all hooked up, all connected. Now, I've spent a bit of time, I've made a whole bunch of transport belts, and I've belted everything in just so that we have all of our main materials at hand in a nice easy location. As we said earlier, we're going to use this area, I might need to zoom out to the map view, we're going to use this area right here, it's a nice little convenient place to build a small little area that's going to help us produce the first science, not only is it, or, or matrix cube, maybe I should try and use the correct terminology, we're not playing Factorio right now, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to make a little factory right here that is uh, going to be a bit of smelting, but it's also going to produce all of the main components that we're going to need going forward, and additionally get our first little science on the go. So we're going to need to clear this little zone out completely, let's get rid of all of the trees, let's clear the area a little bit, and then we can talk about some smelting. Okay then, so we've cleared out a little bit of area, uh, I've been busily working away, crafting a few items, so hopefully we can get a bit of a smelting system on the go right now, something that's going to provide us with the ability to craft all of these items in mass without really having to worry about it. But let's first take a look at what we're going to need for smelting. We've got the three main raw materials, the stone, the iron and the copper, at least the three main raw materials that we can utilize now anyway, uh, and let's just look at some of the properties of these. So 
a piece of transport belt by default can actually transfer you can see the transfer transport speed there on the tool tip it can transfer six items a second now assuming your belts are full that means we've got the ability to make lots and lots of iron ingots and, and copper ingots at a relative speed now how fast do these smelters work well these have a production speed of one and the components we're looking to make so it, let's just start with the copper for example the copper is has a one second craft time it takes one piece of ore and it gives us one uh, copper ingot once it's finished so with six items that are running across this belt per second we theoretically have the ability to make six iron ingots every second but to be able to do that we are going to need six smelters. Yes, six is the magic number. So let's, uh, with our materials coming in this way, let's give ourselves a bit of space because I know we're going to want to use this, this oil eventually. Let's start our first one down here. Let's. Uh, I'm, my my OCD is going to mean that I'm going to have to have this in a row. There we go. One. You don't really need to leave any spaces you built between a them. Smelter, which <laughs> can smelt basic materials. Such yes. As iron ingots. Yes, we know. We're getting on it. We're getting to it. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six. We can run the belt along. Now, we want, we're not going to connect it all up just yet until I finish building it, because you know what happens. You'll, um, you, you'll start building it, and then you'll build something in the wrong place, and then you'll need to move it, and yeah, everything like that always happens. So, our little robot's going to run along. They're going to do all this. We're going to get some sorters going in. One, two, three, four, five. Wait for these last few little bits of belt to be built. And six. Now, once you've put them down, you need to give it a recipe. So for this one, we're doing the copper first, so select copper. What you can do, there's a cool little thing that if you press uh, on a regular keyboard, I think in the, the tool tips in After game. Selecting the recipe, <laughs> you can use select the, the game new. key to copy the recipe and the greater than key to paste the next building that needs to set the same recipe. So there we go, left, uh, less than key, recipe copied, greater than key, pastes them down, means you don't have to go into each one individually and select the, select the, uh, the recipe, that's really quite helpful. We're gonna need a belt on the other side for the, for when they're finished making. So let's run that one along as well. Little, little robots do their thing. Now keeping the transport belts relatively close to these is going to mean that these can zip along and just a single one at this point in the game will be more than enough to meet demand. So there's our, there's our copper. And once we've built them, we're probably going to want to box these up. We're, we're going to want to have at least some storage of these items. So we can squeeze quite nicely. I'm going to leave a bit of space, just a couple of spaces uh, for things like power poles and for us to easily be able to run through and possible expansion later on. We're going to want to have these coming up across here. Now this is going to be the big test to see whether I've made anywhere near enough transport belt. I probably haven't, but hey. So we're going to want one in, and like I do with most of them, one in, two out. And we're going to want to limit this, because whilst it's nice to have lots of spare materials, we don't need entire boxes full of the stuff. Uh, let's put down some power. Now, unfortunately, six is just far enough. You'll see here, just far enough for them to both connect nicely, if we connect this into a grid. Uh, let's uh, just run ever so quickly our power into something over here. There we go. We're gonna have to, <laughs> we're gonna dramatically have to increase our amount of wind turbines uh, before too long. But this, this is, this is something that we're gonna deal with first. We'll, we'll get that close. We won't quite connect it up yet. So there's copper, boys and girls. Copper's in. Copper's gonna be uh, coming out this end here. We're going to save a whole bunch of it in the box. Now all we need to do is replicate the same thing again, but doing it for both stone and for iron. So let's go.
Alrighty then, boys and girls. Well, here we go. Sif by, Sif by some sort of magic, we have now fully completed our little bit of a smelting array, and it's time to connect it all in and keep our fingers crossed that it actually works. Let's get some transport belt from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. And now we should see the magic start happening. <laughs> First and foremost, we're going to see our power dip to scarily low quantities because. Yes, even with placing a few more wind turbines, this is definitely not enough. But we can see. What are, what are we missing here? What are we missing? Oh, we're missing inserters. We always miss something. We always miss something. Let's one, two, three. Let's get those crafted and in. But we can see we've got some copper going in here. We're going to have some iron going in here once I fix the inserters. We've got some stone going in here as well. And everything is starting to look beautiful. Lovely stuff. There we go. Can we get some going in here? Can our power? Our power is desperately trying to to cling on for life right now, but that's uh, that's not really too much of an issue. We'll fix the power. We'll fix the power before our next episode. Well, there we go, boys and girls. I'm going to leave it there for this episode today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little introductory entry level episode one, whatever I'm going to call it, <laughs> to Dyson Sphere program it's a cool little fun game it's a little bit different to factorio it shares a lot of similarities though uh, i'm really enjoying it if you enjoy if you enjoyed this video make sure to give the video a, a like it really does help the channel grow if you're if you're interested in factorio in satisfactory in games of this sort of nature please consider subscribing uh, there's going to be plenty of videos coming out in the future we're going to continue this and we'll be doing some uh, some deep dives into some cool little builds and setups that we can do in this game as well. So then, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that. I will catch you next time. Peace.